Hello again, everybody. My name is Paul Grogan, and welcome to the second in a series of time lapse videos where I'm going to be playing through the solo game of Cloud Spy. This is scenario two. Uh, in the first video that I did of this, I actually managed to win finally. Um, so this is scenario two, continuing the Brawnen campaign. This time I'm fighting against the Grove Tenders, and this scenario setup is very different. First of all, you can see that the uh, the board, it does have Grove Tender Spires on there, but they are right at the top of the screen in, in like an outpost. And then there's one right down at the bottom of the screen. And the, there are three objectives this, to this scenario. The first objective is to collect one relic. Now, it's only one relic because I succeeded in the previous scenario with only one renown. The better I did in the previous scenario actually makes this scenario even harder, which is quite cool. So... You'll see on the left-hand side of the board, there is the uh, the enemy uh, leader, not leader, hero, uh, and that has one of the relics. You see that there's a black chip, that's a face-down chip underneath that hero. So that has got one of the, uh, that that's the relic that I need to find. Now, that, that the, the special rules for this scenario are that that hero, can't remember what it's called, Daiwan, that's it, Daiwan, uh, that hero will only activate once one of my units steps on to the hex group, i.e. the island tile that she is on. Uh, until that point, Daiwan is completely inactive. So what I need to do is I basically need to provoke Daiwan by moving onto that tile. Uh, that will provoke her, that will make her start, uh, that will activate her. She'll come out and then try and kill her and get the relic. The other objective is for me to destroy all of those three um, spires at, you can see at the top of the screen. That's in the Grove Tender outpost. And interestingly enough, for this scenario, my minions, their mark is that furthest spire in the outpost. And my minions will not automatically go towards the enemy fortress. Instead, they're trying to go to that outpost and they're trying to destroy that outpost. Um, my third objective is to destroy, once I've destroyed all of those three uh, spires in that outpost is to also then build my own spires onto on them and protect them until the end of wave four which is odd because this scenario actually has five waves anyway that's what it's all about and let's try and commentate what's going on oh it should be said before i start i actually started filming this last night and i gave up after wave one because i made a couple of a couple of very big tactical mistakes and also the way that the look went it was just a devastating game and was pretty much all over by the end of wave one. So I cancelled that, stopped the filming, uh, and this is my second attempt at playing the game. So off we go. Five waves. Wave one is happening. And here we go. Right. So I'm choosing what units to buy after checking the rules. There is going to be quite a bit of checking rules. And thank you very much to everybody on the Discord channel, particularly the Centre Isle again for helping me. So... Uh, you're not allowed to use Cram. So the hero that I had in the last scenario, you're not allowed to use. So I, I bought Orsh because it's the starting hero. Uh, and here we go. They've moved. The Grove Tenders go first. And then I've moved. Uh, I've, I've so I looked at that um, tile, but I didn't explore it. Uh, I didn't reveal it. Now I did reveal it the second time round because it, was, it had toxic secretion. So I needed to make sure that I, if I'd have revealed it, I wouldn't have been, my units would have basically taken damage. So anyway, the units have all moved forward. We're a few rounds in now. Fighting is going on. I'm looking up the rules just to check what is happening. Um, but yeah, there's a bit of a skirmish going on in the middle of the board. Now, what's interesting is the Grove Tenders have a summon ability. And when you're playing against the AI, I don't know what I'm doing there with the dice tray. Um, when you're playing against the AI, that summon ability automatically triggers as soon as the unit is down to one health. Now, if you manage, if it's on two hit points and you manage to deal it two damage, it doesn't do the summon ability. And that's really good if you can do that. However, if you get it down to exactly one health, it will summon and it summons this big tough creature that you've got, then got to try and get rid of. So that's what's happened here. I believe, uh, yeah, one of the big trees has appeared. And I say big tree, I mean a summon creature. So it looks like my units are taking damage. Yeah, my units are pretty, pretty bashed now. Um, yeah, there's a lot of skirmishing going on in the middle of the board. Uh, what's happening now? Ah, I'm building a spire right now. I'm going to need this uh, because those units are coming in. My units are not going to be, be able to protect me. Or should run away. Uh, you'll find he's doing that a lot in this scenario. <laughs> uh, and the enemy minions are advancing. And it looks like they've both summoned. So, yeah, this is, this is going to be, uh, this is going to be difficult first wave because... Yeah, that spire is probably going to get hit. So this is me. Thankfully, the dispatch platforms have a splash ability. So every time I attack a unit, I can deal one damage to everything adjacent to it. Now, that's everything, including your own. 
So you're going to be very careful about whether you use the splash ability or not. I'm pretty sure it's optional. Right, Orsha's run away over there, but now I'm, I'm realising it, because Orsha's probably going to die soon. So I've got to be very, very careful, and I'm changing my mind on where I move him, because the enemy units move too, and here's me looking up the attack priorities. So what happens with the attack priorities, I'm safe, because the attack priority is the fortress gate first. So that was me letting the enemy move into the fortress gate. Although it was next to my hero, their, their attack priority is always the fortress gate first, which means my hero survived, which means I can basically attack back. And this was a very critical move here, because what I needed to do is I needed to attack back with Orsh, my hero, to kill the enemy unit. That would get, this, this was me adding up. Then I get a fortification chip, and then I can survive the counterattack. I think that's what it was, yeah. So this is nearing the end of wave one, um, and I think that's it. All of the enemy units have gone, so we're rolling the event die for wave two, um, and off we go. We're getting some income. So wave two, I'm deciding what units to buy. Uh, this scenario, in a way, is is more interesting than the last one, although you have to play it in a very different way, because as I say, in the previous scenario, there were spires in the middle of the map, and you were having to basically take, suffer attacks from those all the time. In this scenario, there are no enemy spires in the middle of the map, so you're not completely getting bombarded. Uh, they are when you get to the actual Grove Tender outpost. That's when it gets dangerous. So what am I doing here? I'm buying some upgrades. Now, on round one, I decided to buy the upgrade that get me, got me another three source per turn. I thought this was a wise move, because this scenario lasts for um, five waves, so I thought, well, buying an extra income right from the start would be the good thing to do. As it turns out, I ended up getting too much source in this game, and you have a limit. So I've bought my units. Uh, the Brawn and Go first in wave two. So that's me moving forward. It looks like it's a couple of Battleborn and a Dispatch. Um, we've revealed that. Uh, that is a big tough thing. But hopefully, yeah, so I'm taking a bit of retaliation damage from that. I can't remember exactly what that was now. I recorded this this first half yesterday and I got to the end of wave four last night and then got tired and went to bed and I finished it off this morning. Uh, my, my intention was to film it all yesterday so that my commentary would have been a little bit more accurate. There you go. I killed it. I got a relic and this is me checking on the discord group to see because some of the relic cards have little Elfin Kazi icons in the bottom right and I believe that bit was missing from the actual rulebook to tell you what those icons mean. And what it means is you only use those in the solo game. You don't use the relic cards that don't have the icon. Yeah, relic cards that don't have the icon you remove for the solo game. So I've got this relic, which is basically going to allow me to, uh, I think, add an upgrade to any of my spires uh, beyond normal limits. And you'll see later on why this is really critical um, because of what I do. So my units are moving forward. And as you can see, they're not going for the enemy gate. They are going for that Grove Tender outpost. Um, there you go. So I've built, this was a mercenary spire. So this was a spire that I bought from the market and I am going to use that relic to add another attack chip to it. And that was a massive move because what I've done is if you look at the map, there is a, there is a, the path going from their fortress to my fortress is two paths wide, which means I can effectively keep the enemy minions away from my spire. So that spire that I've just built, which is a mercenary spire, is going to, for the rest of the game, is going to completely uh, bombard everything that it passes with two attack dice and a range of three. And I don't think the enemy units are ever going to get anywhere near it to do any type of attacks back because they, they, their mark is my fortress. So they will go the closest way to my fortress. Um, so that's me. Yeah, there you go. So this is me bombarding the enemy units. It looks like I've already lost all of mine. Yeah, but... I'm doing quite a good job at protecting myself. And that is the end of the second wave. So my units didn't last very long, because if you look at those Grove Tender outpost uh, spires, they're really tough. Uh, and here we go. I'm building a third one here. Um, now, I don't know whether this was a good move or not, but that, as you will see, this is an absolute kill zone now for anything coming in. I've basically got those three spires, and the defence here is is very, very heavy. Um, there's, a, there's a couple of range on... Uh, on some of them. And remember, two of those spies have splash damage. So as soon as the enemy group, uh, as soon as the enemy starts, you know, collecting together uh, in close formation, I'm going to be doing a lot of damage there. Right, I'm deciding what to buy for wave three. And I think I've done some more fortress upgrades. And I think this is the wave where I decide to buy the source siege. Is this the one? Look at that enemy stack there. 
with the mercenary hero on bottom. So there is a mercenary hero on the bottom. Thankfully, it's a rubbish one. Um, I think Orsh, yeah, Orsh run away to heal up. Yeah, that's what's happening. Yeah, I'm, I'm really thinking about what to buy here. Let's see if I buy the Source Siege. I'm going to just zoom in my viewing. There you go. I can see a little bit better now. Uh, of course, it is upside down from your point of view, but that's because I'm playing at the top of the table. Maybe the next game I'll try and play with the with the counters rotated so that you can see them. Um, it'll make it a little bit harder for me to read, but it should be okay. Yeah, this was a really tricky choice here. So what have I gone with? I can't tell. But it looks like there's a mercenary hero on top. Yeah. I think that's Carbone. Yeah, right. This is, this is it. Right. So I've got a Source Siege, which is a transport unit with a range of four. And I've got Carbone. Now, Carbone is from Portal Seekers expansion. And it has an ability of Battle Hardened, which means whenever it is attacked by a Spire, it takes two fewer damage. Now, bear in mind, I'm about to go to that Grove Tender Outpost. Look at the amount of attack chips over there. Um, so that's, that's why I'm doing that. Yeah, there we go. I remembered that Carbone has to move towards the Grove Tender Fortresses. Right, we are now doing some attacks. Um, and then I undid it. Yeah, I had to undo it because I was, I was trying to be clever here. And I was trying to work out how I can do the best attacks. So this was a bit that I definitely had to rethink, change it, uh, and then do again. So there we go. Then I realised that that enemy spire would have actually, it also had range 4. I'd forgotten that, so I'm going to fix that in a minute. But yeah, that enemy Grove Tender Spire should have been able to attack my transport, my Source Siege, before I attacked it. I think I do fix that and I take off a couple of damage. Yeah, this is me looking it up. There you go, and I think I fix it fairly soon. This was probably the point where I went to get Trifle. Yeah, we had Trifle last night. Um, anyway, so you can see the enemy units. They are all uh, they are all piling up, but my defence is quite high. Uh, and there we go. I have now reached the Grove Tender Spires. So I'm in there with my Source Siege, which has been dragged along by, I think, a Dispatch or a Battleborn. And then, um, yeah, the unit is in the back. Now, interestingly enough, the... Um, the AI rules for targeting is it will try and target something that it can kill if it was to roll maximum damage. If it can't kill something, it will go for anyone that it can damage. And then it's my choice. So what I was doing is I was basically having those enemy spires attack Carbon. Um, because it's got battle hardened, it was taking too fewer damage every time. And I did this multiple times until they got a lucky roll and Carbon actually died. And at that point, they started attacking the Sausage. But you can see now that those two units are are, are starting to do damage um, to those Grove Tender Spires in the outpost. And meanwhile, their units attacking me, they, they've all gone long ago because of that. That defence that I built up there is so strong, they, they just can't get through, even, even when the taproot's summon. So... Here we go. I removed the spire. Then I remembered campfire mode. That's why I forgot. I forgot that because all of the enemy units had gone, my heroes go into campfire mode. So that's why I've put the dice on them to show that they're in campfire mode. At that point, the growth tender spires start attacking the source siege. And that is it. That is the end of wave three. Right. Wave four. We've rolled the event die. We've got a three. That means Darb, not Darb, Darwin gets an attack chip. Now, at this point, I'm starting to think, OK, we're about to go into wave four. How are we going to achieve any of these objectives? Am I going to be able to defeat those two Grove Tender Spires at the top? I think I am. But the other objective of getting that relic off Daiwan, I'm going to have to provoke Daiwan at some point. There is a third one. There is a third objective, which is, which is to get rid of all of the enemy Spires. And I thought, no, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that one. So I decided right off that I was only going to go for the two objectives. Right, now that is a massive stack of enemy units. The enemy units get more and more each wave. Um, and this is me deciding how to spend my 11 command points. Now, as far as upgrades go, you'll see that I have upgraded quite a lot of my fortress because I'm overflowing with source. So I've basically upgraded my dispatch units. I've upgraded my, um, uh, my battleborn units. I also upgraded my forsaken units, uh, even though I never actually then bought any forsaken for the rest of the game. Right, so my units are moving forward. Their units are moving forward. Daiwan has now been activated. 
because what I did is I, I quickly moved onto the hex and then off it and that activated Daiwan. Then I remembered, um, no, it's in the next wave that I forgot something. Yeah, so Daiwan is, Daiwan is now activated and started moving forward. Why have I only moved Daiwan one? Apologies about the screen. It keeps shifting up and down. That's me knocking the table slightly. This is the thing we're playing downstairs on a spare table and not actually in my studio is that the table gets a bit knocked. Right, it looks like I've reached the Grove Tender Spire again with a Source Siege and a Dispatch Unit. Um, and yeah, it's all starting to look good. Now, where are we? Is this wave four or is this wave five? I'm not actually sure now. No, it's still wave four. Yeah, this is last night's footage. We can tell that because I'm wearing a grey jumper. Yeah, I changed my jumper this morning. So that's how I can tell that this is last night. <laughs> right, so what's happening? Uh, Orsh is a little bit vulnerable, but he's probably just going to run away. This is me attacking their units. Again, look at that defence that I've got. Those three spires there. Yeah. Yeah, I nearly lost Orsh then. So Orsh should run away again. Just keeps running away and healing, but that's fine. Uh, I've taken down the second Spire. Um, yep, this is me doing limited build action, rebuilding my Spires so that I deal more damage and then absolutely beating the heck uh, of those enemies. Are they going to get close? I don't think they do. I think I managed to defeat all of them before they get anywhere near to me. Meanwhile, what's happening in the, in the outpost is there's only one Spire left of the Grove Tenders. Uh, and here we go. I think... The lighting has changed. That means it is now this morning. Yeah, and this is me. So this is wave five. I've got like 30 source. I bought the upgrade that allowed me to have 30 source. And I, and I had 30 source. I'm buying a mercenary hero at this point. And I'm buying, um, what is it? The Renegade, which is a flying unit, which is really powerful. Um, but the airs can't take them, which is very cool because it's it's an ex-air. It's left the airs. Um, airs as in the faction air, H-E-I-R. Right, what am I going to do in this phase? Well, I think I'm going to be buying... Um, oh, yeah, the, the event die was rolled, and that basically meant that all of the source wells on the board have been reoccupied by landmark tiles. Look at that stack of enemy units there. That's huge. And then here's me spending my 13 command points. I'm going to buy another source siege and some other stuff. Now, I made a mistake here because, if you look, that enemy stack of units, there's a hero on the bottom. Now, the... The, the minions couldn't move because they were blocked. But what I'd forgotten is at the bottom of that stack is a hero that could move over forest. So this is me doing the last move for Roa and then again. Right, here we go. Look at these spires. This is just causing absolute devastation. And there's some tough units there. There's some tree. There's two trees. There's an enemy hero. There's all sorts of stuff. But my spires, um, I'm going to take a little bit of damage on one of them, but... Yeah, the defense of them, there you go. That's me attacking that one. And it has the ram ability. So, yeah, there you go. That's been damaged a couple of times. But my units then move forward. Um, that's got flying. And I'd sent it the wrong way earlier because I thought it could go anywhere, but it can't. It's got to go towards the growth tender spires. More devastation from my units. Yeah, look at that. Now, at the back, he's got two very big units. But... As you'll see, they're so, they're so slow moving, I think I'm going to be okay. And I just hope my units are going to sneak around enough to the Grove Tender Outpost to be able to attack it, which it looks like they are. So my Source Siege has now arrived at that, and it is now starting to go down. So I think I'm going to do this. Meanwhile, what's happened to the uh, enemy hero? Did I kill it in the last one? Yeah, I killed it in the last one. Yeah, I'd missed that because it was playing so fast. What happened is Daiwan came out. I managed to kill Daiwan. Daiwan dropped a relic on the board. Orsh has now picked up that relic and Orsh is now running home with the relic. So that is objective one, almost complete. My units are, are flooding the Grove Tender outpost. So that isn't going to last long at all. There you go. They move forward. Right. So this is this is the enemy units now almost gone. There's just a couple of big, um, big ones at the back. Now, the Grove Tender spires in the outpost have all gone, which means suddenly the mark of my units now shifts towards the enemy fortress. They now start moving towards the enemy fortress. Um, okay, that's this is the enemy units being attacked again. They're not going to get anywhere close to my fortress gate. And this is that flying unit. This is that renegade that I bought on the left-hand side, which has now flown across the mountains, arrived at the enemy fortress. Oh, and there we go. That's it. I'll pause the screen here because... 
That's how it ended. That renegade, uh, that flying unit, basically, yeah, flew across the screen uh, and started attacking the fortress gate. And it was doing three a time, and it was only taking one damage back every time it attacked. So actually, I managed to destroy the fortress gate. Now, that isn't an objective of the scenario, uh, but that is the scenario complete. I won. I think I did this relatively easily, but that is because of that massive defensive um, set of spires that I built. That extra mercenary spire that I got with that relic card that allowed me to put one extra upgrade on it, which gave it that one extra range, that, that changed the game. My defenses, my defenses were so strong, I hardly needed to worry about that, and I could just concentrate on getting rid of the enemy spires. So, interesting scenario. Next up will be scenario three. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found these useful. Uh, thank you very much to all of my Patreon supporters. These videos are not sponsored, so I'm taking a, like, um, you know, two or three hours out of my paid work each day to try and create these videos. And it's basically the support of my Patreon campaign that is funding me to be able to create these videos. So if you like the content that I make, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I know times are difficult right now, um, but maybe bookmark it for future when we're out of this crisis. Um, but yeah, I hope you're enjoying the content. I will wrap things up and I will see you next time. Take care all. Gaming Rules is proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.